Good morning, folks. The lone solar eruption on the Earth-facing side of the Sun the last day was partially an eruption of a plasma filament and partially the collapse of another. A small CME was produced during this event, but as you might imagine from its position on the limb, it's not heading in Earth's direction. Look to 6 o'clock UTC in the solar wind telemetry for a jolt to speed, temperature, and plasma density. We took a low energy proton spike at that moment. We're jumping to Iswa to see the southern coronal holes complemented by one on the north. You should be able to see a touch of green where the fields emanate, indicating that it is a positive opening, but it's not enough to change the near Earth space for mostly negative influence. Solar flaring remained low as we expect it to be for about two more weeks, but we likely have a sunspot peak today as the departing group still has a few hours on the disk and is joined by new groups visible north and south. The leading group incoming still has beta spread, but it's worth monitoring in the middle. Meanwhile, the cresting southern sunspots are bipolar with hints of mixing potential. We'll wait to see if the northern spots are flying solo or not. We've seen that Venus and Saturn are exiting opposite sides of Soho's coronagraph, but the light incoming there is Mercury. It's set to conjoin the Sun on December 9th and ramp those flares. Let's take a peek at the Northeast Caribbean where a Virgin Islands quake swarm has developed overnight. We constantly monitor such upticks here because history tells us to do so. Satellites reveal underground landslides over time that likely caused mega tsunamis that would run up the U.S. East Coast. And we sure wouldn't want to see something like that again. Compare their proximity to the much more famous Canary Island tsunami risk which would have to traverse the entire Atlantic before getting to the coastline. Other notable quakes of the day were mostly in the U.S., including two well above average for Oregon there. Also took one above average in the Middle East, Strait of Hormuz. Got an article link from the NRAO on how our galaxy is a thief. It's a pretty good read. Let's quickly check in on the weather records as the U.S. has been dominated by cold this month. But actually, according to these government records, cold has been dominating all year some of these really aren't even close and it's not just the daily records but in the monthly records as well you can see how the numbers stack up even at the all-time records list which is a bit more balanced to be sure you can also pull up the global records and yes I've got this linked for you below as well the global picture shows the balance of climate extremes both hot and cold speaking of which 24-hour temperature delta in the U.S. looks like this. Blame the central low as it pulls heat and moisture up the eastern convergence and drives down that frigid air at the backside. We've got storms and flood threats in the east, with more cold and snow coming behind the low when the system rolls through. Storms may be severe, so please take note of local warnings. Europe sees a low break from the Atlantic for the first time in weeks and is settling in there. The primary watch zones are for flooding and storms in that general area tonight. Down under, we'll set the precipitable water overlay on to show how the clashing air masses deliver the most precipitation in that area right there. We'll have some other weather watches with the water vapor overlay, then we're at Helio Viewer for shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.